Joining me on the podcast today is Mr. Trevor Relliford. He is the all-time leading uh, record holder in steals for Alabama hit basketball history. He was fourth overall in scoring, and he played for the Crimson Tide from 2010 to 2014. Trevor, what's going on, man? What are you up to these days? Uh, no much, Scott. I appreciate you you having me on here. And uh, I mean, just kind of taking it easy now in retirement life. And I've been just kind of in the real estate world a little bit. And um, I mean, also doing insurance as well and kind of just transitioning right now and, and just kind of figuring out this life. I got a little one. So just a, a dad being a dad and things like that. So, yeah, just enjoying it. That's awesome, man. So you grew up in Kansas City. You're a Kansas City kid. You got an older brother, Travis Relaford, who had a successful high school career, went on to play for the Kansas Jayhawks. And then when it was your time to step up, you guys, your junior season in basketball, you go undefeated. And then there's a game coming up. You lose on a buzzer beater. How tough was that loss? Oh, uh, that was that 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 was tough and, and even tougher. You know, bringing it up, you know, right now because I kind of kind of like let it go a little bit. But I mean, we we got our revenge the next season. We we end up going undefeated the next season, my senior year, and end up winning that the uh, the state tournament. So I mean, we went out on a high note, which I can't complain about, and I did it with my best friend. So. That was that was always a cool a cool experience. I always remember. So, so as you mentioned, you guys won a senior uh, state title your senior year, and you also won one in football. If I'm not mistaken, what kind of football player were you? Um, I, I honestly think that was like uh, my best sport, and I and I'm being serious. I got you can go check the you know highlight tapes on uh, YouTube or whatever. But I, I think that was uh I think that was my first love and. They kind of went to, kind of hand in hand and and winning the state championship with my friends that year and then doing basketball as well was I mean you can't you can't write a better story I mean for us all for us to win those two championships on our way out was was a, was a cool thing. I can remember back when you played at Bama, man. You were a scrappy player, played with that underdog mentality. How much did that factor in to coming to Alabama out of high school, wanting to put it on the map as a as far as a basketball school? Uh, I mean, I, I think that played, I mean, that was it. That was everything. You know, the moment I got to, to campus, uh, I think I met, the first person I met was Nick Saban. And uh, and I remember him just, you know, just talking about how we could just like kind of change the program because at that time, football was just changed. And I think they came off a national championship, if I'm not mistaken. And I mean, I was just ready to run through a wall, you know, here and, and, and just kind of put this school on the map and 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 I and I think we did that. You know, I think our team was a we we did a lot of good things. Wish we could have had some more wins, of course, and experienced like some some SEC championships like those guys now. But I mean, you, we, I think we we definitely built that foundation, and then now they just they just taking it and running with it. So that's that's good to see. And I can also brag on the, on my alma mater. So it, it was good, no doubt. I'm sure when you got to Tuscaloosa, you kind of realized it's a whole new beast as far as from high school and high school, you can maybe take some days off. Maybe, you know, the team you're playing isn't so good. So you can kind of lack a little bit, but when you get to college, man, everybody's got their resources. Everybody's on, you know, trying to up their game. So how much was that of an adjustment for you coming to college? Uh, I think just, just coming to college and just seeing some of, you know, the athletes that we had on our team and not really experiencing that in Kansas city, and, and, and I mean, even in AAU, just growing up, I mean, those these guys are I may mean, have been in a weight room for a year and, and all that plays a factor in too. So just just being able to, you know, adapt with that and then just kind of letting the game slow down for me, because I mean, when I first got here, it was super fast. And, and that's anybody that's coming into college and, and, and just being around a bunch of guys that had the same capabilities as you. So. I mean, it was, it, was, it was a little learning experience, but, you know, that's that's just growth. And I feel like I was able to to come in a situation where I got the keys right away. And, and certain things I going on the road to Mississippi State, I'm going against D. Bose, who's a you know perennial player in the league. And, and now I'm I just got to figure it out. So it, it was it was it was cool just to come in here and put it on the kind of put Bam on the map a little bit and, and also just kind of grow every year. So it was good. Kind of playing off of that, I know you guys had some intense practices when you were here at Alabama, and you guys had some guys on your team that could lock up and really play some D. And as I mentioned before, you hold the most steals in Alabama basketball history. So how much did that kind of help you in your own game? It, like I said, it, it was literally everything. I, I remember my freshman year, I'm going against Scenario Hillman, 
every every day in practice. If if I can go against Scenario Hillman, and I'm not saying I'm just blowing by him or anything, but if I'm competing with him every day, I mean I get in the game. It, it's it's kind of it's it's kind of not the same for me, you know. Granted, you know it, it's good guards on the other side, but the way we practice, the intensity, it was almost on another level than in the games. You know, almost you were tired when you got to the game. <laughs> but like I said, going against him and some other guys on our team, Ben Eblin, I mean, I, I kind of was able to get instincts from them as far as you know, kind of being prepared on defense and steals because I think Scenario was leading. And then I think I passed him like my senior junior year. I think he was he was high up in the steel category too. And I ended up passing him. But I mean, I took a lot of stuff from those guys on the defense end and just being aggressive. So man, take me back. So what's the story? I heard you had a pretty eventful day, your first day moving into Bryant. I heard I heard it took you 30 minutes to get from checkers back to Bryant. What's the story there? <laughs> Well, I mean, it depends on who told you this story. Like, uh, at, th at this time, I, I mean, I'd never even been, like, I, I want to say Ben gave me his card. And, uh, I, I mean, I just, at this time, it's like my, I want to say second week in Tuscaloosa. Honestly, probably my second time behind the wheel of a car. So, like, it was a little learning on, on both sides. I, I really wasn't the best driver at that time. So, I'm I, I thankful, thankful for the confidence he had in me, but. I mean, yeah, I definitely got lost. In <laughs> and now I, I use GPS everywhere, so I'm good. So we're good now. <laughs> man, that's funny. Um, Kind of going back to basketball, man, when you were on the court, who were some of the biggest trash talkers that you played with or played against? Oh, the biggest trash talker. Uh, mm. Without getting anybody in trouble. Like on, on just with our within our like our team or just like kind of opponents or yeah. So who was the biggest trash talker you may have played with and then played against? Mm. I'm trying to I'm trying to think. A lot of the guards that I went up against is like were or a majority of guards that I've I've grew up with grew up playing against. So I kind of knew them. And a lot of people really didn't. I mean, they didn't really talk. I Tony Mitchell wasn't in there getting in, getting into oh, it with no, some guys. No, Tony, Tony, no, no, no. It's our team talking. It's, yeah, it's yeah, a, Alabama. A lot of those guys, like Chris Hines, for example. I mean, that's the one of the best teammates I, I ever played with, and as far as just like personality wise. And once that game started, I mean, he he's talking to everybody. Like people may not even be listening to him. He's still talking and trying to get under your skin. And, and him, J, J. Mike, in practice. I mean, that was some of the. In practice now, that was some of the best trash talking. Like, we we went at it with each other and just from a competitive side. But in the games, like, I, I really didn't I, I really didn't hear a lot of trash talk because that's just like a trigger for me. So, I, I mean, it, I didn't really do a lot. Yeah, I celebrated at times, but I, I really didn't say much just because, you know, I, I know how that can get. <laughs> I know Jay Mike could go on the court and be chirping and then go back to Bryant and play some spades. <laughs> Hey, you you got some you got some good sources, <laughs> man. So we talked on uh, the buzzer beater that cost you your undefeated season your junior year in high school, but you kind of got to get your redemption, so to speak, against Georgia, hitting the half court buzzer beater, man. What was that like, man? That that shot right there. I honestly think that it just like as far as people just remember me at Bama, like that that moment right there, just outside of all the hard work and other things that I tried to just display when I was here. I think that shot just was, I wouldn't say ice on the cake, but it, it was like one of those moments that like the people around here never forget my, myself. I'll never forget. And it was just a cool experience. And I'm not going to sit here and say I knew it was going in, but it was pretty cool to just kind of like follow the ball the whole time. And, and like, if you see at the end, when I stop, it's kind of like me just in shock that it, that it even went in. Cause I'm following my, I'm following it the whole time until I get under the rim. And literally, I just hear it go through, and I just kind of stop for a second, and I look, and I see T. Lace coming after me, Levi, Drew, and then it, after that, it was, and I remember Lacey hitting the buzzer beater, the the first game of the season against uh, South Dakota State. So I saw his celebration, and I just, and I when I saw him running at me, I just thought about doing the same thing because it was just a cool, just to kind of like show him some love. Cause Lace was Lace was the buzzer beater guy. So like once I got one, it, it was it was a cool thing to kind of do his celebration and, and kind of just run with it. 
man, after Alabama, you put your name in the hat for the NBA draft. You don't get drafted, but you get picked up by the Hawks to play in the summer league. What was that experience like, you know, getting to play in the summer league? Oh, uh, that was that was a cool experience. And I mean, it set me up to go overseas. And I mean, you know, I wouldn't say go to like the, the greatest situation out, out the gate. But I mean, I was able to go overseas and and, and kind of start my career off in a, in a good sense. And and then just from there, the connections I made through that team, most of those guys, I mean, uh, Coach Ham, he's the head coach of the Lakers now and and things like that. So it, it was just good relationships and, and just meeting some of those people there and and things like that. So it was it was cool to go experience summer league for sure. Like you touched on uh, just a second ago, you spent some time overseas. You spent some time in Greece and in Germany. Man, what is that experience like to move across the world, away from your family, away from your friends, just to play basketball? Well, I would I would definitely say Greece. That that whole experience, like that, that's second home to me. Well, I, I would say third because I'm from I'm from Missouri and Bama, and, and I've been in Bama ever since. So that's that's another home for me and. I mean, just the people there were so welcoming. It, it reminded me so much of Bama. Just it was a team over there. I mean, we proven ourselves year in, year out, uh, family oriented, you know. So, I mean, Greece, uh, I could have played there for 20 years, you know. Granted, you know, everything is a business and, and budgets and, thing, and, and things like that. But, I mean, the other countries, uh, I was in Israel for a little bit uh, for like a half a season. Germany, I was there for two years. That was that was a it was a good experience. You know, I had a couple injuries there and some and other things, but all those all those things being able to see that part of the world and you know have my wife over there, which my daughter you know could have got the experience, but it, it was a good time though for sure. Trevor, you're a Bama legend. I want to take I want to thank you for taking the time to sit down and chat with me, man. Good luck to you. I appreciate it, Scholar, and good luck to you, and man, you get you got some good going. Appreciate Thanks, it. man. All right, see you.